The trade in exotic animals in the USA is a multi-billion dollar industry out of control. Captive wild animals such as tigers, lions, non-human primates, bears, reptiles and wolves are being bred in their millions and sold on the open market at auctions, pet stores and even on the internet. An investigation by the Animal Protection Institute reveals disturbing new evidence that these dangerous wild animals suffer in appalling conditions, kept as so-called pets in private homes or exploited as attractions for public display in roadside zoos and personal menageries. And the few regulations that exist are totally ineffective. In some states, there is no law at all. No federal law exists which regulates the keeping of exotic animals in private hands. There is only a license from the Department of Agriculture for breeding, exhibiting, or selling. So it's left to states to legislate. And this varies. To date, only 15 states prohibit the private possession of certain species, such as large cats, wolves, bears, dangerous reptiles, such as alligators and crocodiles, and most primates. Many states, currently these 13, have no license or permit requirements at all. And even in those states or localities which prohibit private ownership, it's ineffective as federal licenses to exhibit or breed are easily available which allows people to get around the ban. We passed a, um, a ban law on here on the island so the, you can't own exotic cats or, or, or wolf hybrids here. Uh -huh. But I, they left one blue bowl which I use, I'm a licensed exhibitor. Uh -huh. So I can, I've got a federal license to show them to school groups. The Animal Welfare Act, which is supposed to set minimum standards for the care and housing of animals, hardly works in practice. The API investigation discovered at a number of licensed premises exotic animals kept in awful conditions. The lack of controls also fails to protect the public and the owners. Wild animals in captivity are dangerous and unpredictable. Time and time again, people, including young children, have been attacked and even killed by privately owned exotic animals. I think whenever you have a wild animal in private ownership, whether it's an unaccredited roadside facility or someone's backyard, I think it poses a huge danger to the public. Many of the incidents we've seen in the last few years occur in these types of environments. We've had five people killed by big cats in the last three years and these were all big cats in private ownership. Um, I think it's a huge danger when these animals are, are uh, when, when the public is allowed to have contact with these animals. These are animals that are predators and we are prey. And given the opportunity in these types of unnatural environments, they will try to kill you. I think we've created the, these situations where these animals are not allowed to engage in their natural behaviors. It's completely unnatural for them. And then you put them in contact with the public. I think it's just an accident waiting to happen. This is what is called a primate picnic, a national gathering of primate owners who proudly show off their dressed up monkeys like parents at a children's party. I want to hold that baby. <laughs> can I show you to my friends? Daddy can come. Come here. Come here. Come here. Paraded around in strollers and harnesses, these wild animals were clearly disturbed by what was happening around them. They are often raised in human households like children and may be forced to wear diapers, clothes, and hats while they are taken around on a leash. Some even have pierced ears and wear jewelry. But monkeys are not the only wild animals kept in the home. API investigators found a range of species during private visits kept in totally unsuitable conditions, either confined to cages or just as inappropriately roaming free inside the home. He is huge, but he. When he stretches out in bed with me, he goes from my shoulders to my knees. Tiger cubs and infant monkeys were kept inside this house along with a five-year-old child. 
it's a, I think a company from Dutch. Hey, I, 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 hey, I don't think so. The young animals were roughly handled by their owners, and the child, knowing nothing else, treated them like toys. Now what's this? Although she sometimes seemed wary and apprehensive of an attack. <laughs> No, I won't let him bite you, but you should stay up there. Hmm. In this Washington State home, the whole wall of one side of the living room opened out into cougar pens. This is totally unsuitable, yet it is the home of a representative of an organization promoting responsible private ownership of exotic animals. In another Washington State home, a private owner kept his bears here, with no shelter, no enrichment, and the ground covered in debris. A cougar and tiger were found in similar conditions. Both displayed signs of distress. In Ohio, a representative from an outspoken organization promoting ownership of exotic cats kept her own cougar in a small, barren pan. While inside her crowded living room, various animals, including this lemur, lived in a collection of small cages. She admitted it's a free-for-all in her state, with no law governing private ownership of these exotic animals. You don't really need a license for, for a cat unless you want to display it. Breed it, sell it, or oh, exhibit yeah. it. Exhibit okay. it. I applied for my license, got inspected, got approved. But because I refuse to breed, sell, or exhibit, I'm not. But you can have it in your home. As they grow older, these animals become too big and aggressive for their owners to handle and are often dumped or left to a life of boredom and frustration, languishing in cages in backyards and garages. In one backyard, this five-year-old unwanted cougar was found in a totally unsuitable pen. When API investigators visited the home, no one had been in to clean the pen out for over a month following an attack. This is an all too familiar pattern taking place across the country. The commercial use of exotic animals involves displaying them and often making them perform in privately owned roadside zoos and menageries. Dance! Come on! Come on! Come on! He goes, <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? Little of the money the animals make goes toward their own welfare. They are often confined to small and barren environments that fail to meet their physiological and psychological needs. For these bears at Cherokee Bear Zoo, there was virtually nothing in their compound to interest them. Instead, they were forced to perform tricks to be thrown treats. Animal pens are often designed for appearance and ease of cleaning and not to meet the needs of the animals. Concrete and other hard surfaces are uncomfortable and can be physically damaging. Some animals were kept in solitary confinement, including highly sociable animals such as primates. Other primates were kept in small, unstimulating cages. Even some of the sites open to the public were run down and appeared to be nothing more than people's personal menageries. Yet conditions like these are perfectly legal. These facilities are all licensed and required to be annually inspected by the USDA. This shows how totally inadequate current regulations are in protecting animal welfare. At Charlotte Metro Zoo, also known as Metrolino Wildlife Park in North Carolina, this leopard was found living in these squalid conditions. Animals may be forced to live for long periods in trailers, either on the road or for shows. To try and cope with the barren environment, animals will cut themselves off from their surroundings. They may become lethargic and inactive or develop abnormal behavior. A lot of times these animals will, will uh, engage in a lot of self-destructive behaviors, a lot of abnormal behaviors. You'll see stereotypic behavior, which you know, constant repetitive motions and, and pacings around an enclosure. A lot of times they will self-mutilate themselves. 
I've seen, you know, many medical cases where uh, animals have literally chewed themselves to the point where they've even chewed off limbs and fingers and digits because they're so stressed. Severe stereotypical behavior was seen by API investigators in a number of roadside zoos. It was also seen in private homes. At the primate picnic, some of the privately owned primates who were confined inside crates and pens displayed abnormal behavior such as rocking backwards and forwards, clutching a soft toy. One owner from Ohio stated, It always does that. It's just your way of past time, I think. A lot of them do that. Yeah, because they're active. And... Comments like that are further evidence of the lack of understanding by owners of the complex behavioral and psychological needs of wild animals. They appear blissfully ignorant that it is their actions and conditions in which they keep the animals that are producing the dysfunctional and disturbed behavior in the first place. Very good boy. The private ownership of exotic animals represents a real danger to families, communities, and the public. Not only can these dangerous animals injure and even kill people, they are also a health risk through communicable diseases. <laughs> the industry is well aware of the dangers, yet lobbies hard in favor of the private ownership of these animals. However, evidence uncovered by the API reveals an alarming number of injuries and attacks on adults, including the owners themselves. But see, they're horrendous biters. I mean, they bite so bad that they can just rip tendons and... So while publicly owners play down the risks, privately they admitted to API investigators how dangerous these animals really are and how irresponsible other owners can be. It's really not a good idea to put your face in their face. Because <laughs> I've seen a couple people that have had their faces bit really bad. Like Nancy. Her macaque almost took her nose off. That's a bit my nose. <laughs> bit my nose off. Oh. And they'll definitely bite. <laughs> and she just uh. went and grabbed my face and went, And I thought, oh my god, I felt this kind of warm. Then I looked and there's blood all over. The big cats are hard and I they know, cause yeah. a lot of problems. You know, people do a lot of really irresponsible things with the big cats and um, people wind up getting killed all the time. They're stupid. They go out and buy tigers. They go out and buy monkeys. They take them out in public and they bite somebody. Or they bite them at home, they build a cage. It's not big enough, not sturdy enough. And then they let their little kids go play with them. We had a whole bunch of little kids eaten by tigers last year. Like a 12-year-old boy got eaten. And then, um, yeah, and it's all, it's just carelessness. Some private owners mutilate their animals to try to control them and limit the danger. They just have the fangs removed and they can keep their fingernails. <laughs> A lot of times private owners will try to remove the, the canine teeth or sometimes all of the teeth uh, and the claws of these animals in an attempt to try to make them less dangerous, which is really a farce because many of these animals, even without their teeth or without their claws, can inflict a tremendous amount of damage. So if you can imagine removing a healthy tooth that's intact, whether it's done with pliers or however it's done, there's a potential for creating a great deal of trauma to the mouth. You can fracture the mandible, the lower jaw, or the maxilla by trying to extract these teeth. Um, a lot of times these, these teeth have multiple roots. You leave a root in the, in the mouth and it will form an abscess and it's very painful for the animal and cause problems for them down the road. Um, in many cases I've seen big cats that have had their claws removed with garden shears. When they're young they just snip it off. The owners themselves admitted the mutilation didn't work. They broke his jaw, and it was like, never again. And he bit me with his with his back teeth, <laughs> and that hurt just as bad. So it was like, might as well keep the fangs too. What difference does it make? Mm. They can hurt you no matter, you know. Yeah, of course. The key is you don't piss them off. <laughs> Other owners may use aversive training methods. 
Here at Charlotte Metro Zoo in North Carolina, API investigators were told that an owner needed to be aggressive with monkeys to control them. He demonstrated on a visibly distressed animal. Yet the reckless actions by many owners witnessed by the investigators seem to make confrontation with these wild animals inevitable. In Washington state, a leading representative for the private ownership of exotic animals was attacked by her bobcats. With no secure lockout area, the cat was able to get out and attack her again. Uh -oh. This same person took further risks by opening gates that led directly into her indoor cougar pens and encouraging the hand feeding of the animals. Oh. You need to stick it in so he gets enough to bite. Yeah. You have to be careful, is it? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Can I throw it in? <laughs> this site belongs to a stage show in Washington state that involves dangerous wild animals, including bobcats, snakes, and a cougar. When API investigators visited, they were taken into a bobcat enclosure, despite the fact that at least one of the bobcats had severely attacked the owner. I had a grabber once. She has claw, all of her claws. My legs, my stomach, my everything was bleeding. My hands were bleeding. <laughs> one bobcat leapt onto a tree trunk and was just above one of the API investigators' heads. The cat looked like he was going to pounce. The owner laughed and said, <laughs> He was going to jump right on your yeah, head. You like, you like getting big and fat, fella. Also in Washington State, one private owner decided to go into a bear pen while he had visitors. No, 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 Some of the locations visited did not provide adequate protection. Enclosures were poorly maintained. There were inadequate safety barriers between dangerous animals and the public. API investigators watched while the owner of Charlotte Metro Zoo gave a private performance with a tiger for a fee. This adult tiger was in a non-secure area with members of the public. This same person then entered a tiger pen and showed off. This included him sitting on the back of a tiger and sticking his face into a tiger's mouth. Later in the day, he entered a safety area without securing the door behind him. He then allowed a tiger to enter where there was no effective secure barrier between this tiger and zoo visitors. <laughs> Here at Tiger Ridge Exotics in Ohio, the owner not only placed himself at risk, but also those who visited this site. He encouraged an API investigator to sit in a pen with a lynx on her lap. When the lynx started to behave aggressively, the owner intervened and was bitten. He then entered a number of enclosures containing bears and lions, opening gates that led directly from the animal areas into the areas used by the public with little apparent concern or awareness of safety. Oh, this pen contained a bear who had savaged the owner in the past, yet he didn't secure the gate behind him. As he entered, one of the bears grabbed his arm with his mouth, forcing him to step backwards. Stand up. Stand up. You gotta stand up. Sit up. Sit up. 
He then opened the gate and stood there with the gate open while trying to get one of the bears to perform a trick. Removed from the mothers at birth, exotic animals are raised by humans hoping to make them more manageable before being sold onto the open market. This often interferes with the animal's natural development, causing dysfunctional behavior, and fails to prevent future aggression. As this experienced private cat owner admitted. That's the problem with the big cats too, because even, you know, cougars that I raised from the time they were tiny babies, um, if they got in a bad mood, they'd, they'd just jump on you from behind and... Mm. and no, that's the problem. They, you though. just have to remember they're wild. Animals such as bears, tigers and monkeys are continuously bred to provide a constant supply of infants for the pet trade or to be used as an attraction at roadside zoos and fairs for people to pet or have their photos taken with. This can be extremely stressful for the animals and dangerous for the public. This cub was left unsupervised in a public area after one such photo shoot. Regulations regarding the handling of big cats are supposed to prohibit young or immature animals from exposure to rough or excessive public handling. Yet despite the law, tiger cubs under the age of eight weeks were on display for public handling, which clearly distressed them. Some exotic animals strike back. Big cats, such as cougars and tigers, represent a real danger to people, particularly children. <laughs> Yet many owners take unacceptable risks where children can have direct contact with the animals. I had three tigers that lived with me when she was two years old. The following voice is that of a representative of an organization that actively promotes private ownership of exotic cats. The big cats pick out the smallest person in the crowd, and then they think, you know, that's the one I'm going for because oh, that one will be that one will be easier to catch. Um, and then they just they focus on that person and they never take their eyes off. <laughs> you know, we were teasing our daughter all the time. But she's not good. We're going to throw her in with Toby. Federal regulations of licensed facilities prohibits direct contact between juvenile or adult animals and the public without sufficient distance or barriers between them. The API investigation uncovered evidence that these regulations were being breached at a number of facilities. Here at Santa's Land in North Carolina, bear cubs were put on display and fed in public. Now one thing I must say is our insurance company says no pet. However, if you decide you want a pet, keep in mind we're not liable, okay? Now they will buy it. There was no effective safety barrier and the public were openly encouraged to pet the bear cubs on a leash, even though they were told the animals could bite. At Cherokee Bear Zoo, children were allowed to stick their hands through bars to pet tiger cubs. Come here. At New River Zoo, also in North Carolina, a black leopard cub was taken around on a leash for visitors to pet, despite the risk of biting and scratching while leaping at people. <laughs> Close encounters with wild, potentially dangerous animals is even encouraged amongst roadside zoos and menageries. But a kangaroo kick can cause serious injury. Visitors can also, for a fee, spend time in a room full of lemurs. In Ohio, <laughs> API investigators signed up for a one-day training program with large exotic cats at the Siberian Tiger Conservation Association. You want to get up and close and personal, this is how we do it. Hey, Katarina. <laughs> oh, the chopper bug. Oh, the chopper, chopper, chopper bug. The association had lost its exhibitor's license because a number of people had been attacked and injured during so-called close encounters. So at the time of their visit, it was officially closed. Not according to the owner, who continued the so-called close encounters with tigers without any apparent action by the USDA. Even worse, the owner continued to act in a reckless and irresponsible way. 
all three tigers in one enclosure had their full set of canine teeth. Despite this, the public were allowed to feed them. They were encouraged to touch, stroke, and kiss them. And the owners even cajole people to sit astride the cats. API investigators felt these tigers could attack at any moment. And they did. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's enough. <laughs> They're not domesticated. Luckily, it wasn't serious this time. But these huge cats can kill in an instant, and the owner was recklessly playing roulette with people's lives. The only way to stop the proliferation of the exotic animal trade and the suffering it causes is to stop the breeding, bartering, trading and sale of exotic animals for personal possession, profit and amusement, and by educating the public to understand that wild animals belong in the wild, not in our homes. Action is needed now. Given the serious problems associated with the private possession of exotic animals, it is critical that states act to pass strong legislation. API is a leader in the fight against the private possession of exotic animals, and we will work with state and local legislatures to ensure that this practice is ended. There must be no more injuries and deaths. We must take action now to prevent a future tragedy.